Okay then, so in the last lesson we saw how we could pass all of this content right here, a form, into the modal as a slot and then render that inside the component using these slot tags. So we know how to use those. And now I'd like to talk a little bit more about forms. But before we go any further, what I think I'd like to do is extract all of the form content into its own components and then use that component right here because at the minute, the code in this app.svelte file is getting rather long and it's going to get pretty messy soon. So let's delete all of this stuff right here. In fact, we'll just get rid of the H3 and then we'll cut this stuff because we'll just paste this in another file in a second. And then inside source, I'm going to create a new file and call this add person form .svelte. So let's create this first of all. We need a script tag at the top. We also need some HTML. So I'm going to do first of all this form right here and we'll come back to this and make it better in a second. And then at the bottom, we'll do a style tag just in case we need any styles in the future. Okay, so we have this form right here and we have this input for the name and this input for the belt color. I also want to bind these to two properties up here in the script. So I'm going to say let name. We don't need to initialize it with a value because when a user types into this, it's going to update this variable. And then also let belt color like so. Okay. So we have these two properties. Now we want to bind the value of these inputs to these properties so that when we type into the input, it updates these values as well. We've seen that in the past when we looked at data binding. So let me now say bind the value of this input to the name variable up here. And let's do the same down here, but this is going to be bound to the belt color. So bind value equals belt, oops, belt color like so okay so we have these two inputs we've seen all of this kind of stuff before and they're just binding to these two properties right here now i want to do a third input and that is going to be for the age so let me do another input but this time we're going to use not text but number and that gives us a number input and that is regular html and i'll show you what this looks like over here if we open the modal we can't see it just yet because we've not rendered this component. So let's go to app.svelte and let's go to the top and import this new form component we created. So import add person form from and it's dot forward slash and it's add person form dot svelte like so. And now we can use this down here in the content and we're going to place it in the modal. So like so. Okay, so all we're doing is importing this new component right here and this template and we're outputting it inside the modal. So then all of that content is going to go into the modal and be rendered right here. Hope that makes sense. Save it and refresh. Try this out. Open modal. And now we see this thing right here. This is a number input and we have these two arrows. So it's just a way to output a number in an HTML form, right? Now, the normal default behavior of JavaScript when we're reading values from any type of input, whether it be number or text or anything else, is to take that value and convert it into a string in JavaScript. So when we read that value, it will always be a string. But in Svelte, what it does when we bind to a number input, it turns that into whatever the type is here, like a number, an integer. So I'm going to say bind value equal to age and we'll create that up here. So let age and if we type in five here, oops, that should be colon, not semicolon. If we type in five into this field, it's going to convert that into an integer and this will be an integer because in our data, we're storing integers, not strings. It doesn't really matter in our case, but just to keep it consistent, that's pretty nice that it does that. If you wanted this to be a string, you could then convert this to be a string if you wanted to. Okay, so we have those three inputs now and we need also a placeholder on this. So I'm going to say placeholder is equal to age like so. Okay, so we have those three things. Now let's take a look at what they look like. Name, belt color and age and they're bound to those three variables. Now we also want to react to when a user submits this form. Now we can do this in two ways. We can either attach a click event to this or we can attach a submit event to the form. Now I'm going to use the submit method because we've not seen that yet. So I'm going to say on 
colon, submit. So just like we have a click event on something, we have submit as well. And that's always on the form, the submit event. If it was a click event, it would be on the button. But submit events are on the form because they're the things that are submit. And this is going to trigger whenever we click on this button because when you click on a button inside a form, it submits that form, okay? So when this happens, we want to then invoke some kind of function. So I'm going to say handle submit and I'm going to declare that up here. So const handle submit is equal to a function and inside this function all we're going to do is console.log the name, the belt color and also the age. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. When we submit the form, it's going to log out the current values of these. So let me try this, and you're going to notice something a little strange. So if I open the modal, type in a load of junk right here, and let's just open up the console first of all so we can see what's logged out. The age, 45, add a person, and it flickers there for a second, but then it disappears, and that's because the page refreshed. Now, I was talking about the default action of certain things before, and I said that the default action of a form when we submit it is that the page is refreshed. But remember, I also said we had an event modifier to combat that, and that event modifier was called prevent default. So let's use that pipe and then prevent default. And this now prevents the default action that happens, that occurs when a form is submit. So it's going to prevent the page from refreshing okay so let's save that and come over here again open the modal and if we say now we yoshi and belt color is black and age is 25 add the person now it doesn't refresh and we see those values right here in the console Okay, so that's the basics of forms. Some of this we've seen before, but I've also shown you now this number input and how to submit the form and prevent the default action. But in the next video, I'd like to look at two other input types, checkbox inputs and select boxes. So we'll take a look at that next.